Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you guys are watching this and only watching this, because this one is actually going to be a ex an exclusive, actually, for YouTube. Uh, just going to be on the YouTube channel. I'm going to advertise it on the Instagram and everywhere else, but I just wanted to at least put in something that's a little bit different from what we're normally used to as far as content. So today, this is going to be pretty much the thoughts that I have personally in the tier rankings for the starting quarterbacks for this coming year. So that being said, we are going to go ahead and get everything started. I'm going to start from the right that I have here and then just go my way and just work my way up there. Um, so the first person is Matthew Stafford. Um, Matthew Stafford, he's tough, just in general as a quarterback. But I think in this case, I'm going to put him on the... I'm putting him on the C tier. I do like him. He's okay. But the fact that he doesn't run as much as I would like for him to. And I think that they're going to actually use the run a little bit more over in the Rams organization. So that being said, I in a two quarterback league, no question. I'd probably be all over him. But I usually prefer to have my quarterbacks uh, running. So that being said, I do like Matthew Stafford, but I don't think that he'll be someone that I would start on a week to week basis. Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, I'll, I love his weapons, but I'm actually going to also put him on to the seat here. I don't really need him to be my starter on a week to week basis. I do love everything that they got going on in Jacksonville. It's just that I don't think he's a person I can rely on on a week to week basis. He's actually kind of close. And as you saw, I almost put him onto the beer tea, B tier, excuse me. But as of right now, I can't really put him on there. Uh, next up, I got Tua. <sighs> now, if it wasn't for his injury or his history of injuries, I would probably put him on A tier if you want me to be honest. But there's a lot going on with him and I do love the volume that they that he creates so that being said I am going to put him on the B tier for just right now if he doesn't get hurt and they pretty much work the way that they worked last year when he was okay then I'm seeing this man as an as an A tier for sure but for right now it's a really high B um Russ 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 Russ, Russ Wilson I'm going to put as a B. He is playable, I feel. I feel that Sean Payton's going to take out or bring out strength for Russell Wilson. Um, they have a really good, they have a good pass catching core. So there's no denying how good his, their weapons are. But I can't trust him as of this very second by the time of this video. But there is hope for him. So, But for right now, I'm going to put him for the B tier. So Ryan Tannehill is kind of a bit of a joke. He's, <laughs> I mean, the DeAndre Hopkins trade didn't really do much for me for the receivers, but for him in general, like if it wasn't for the DeAndre Hopkins trade, I would probably put him on a D tier. But I think that Tannehill does have some kind of opportunity to be somewhat relevant so i'm actually going to put them on a c like a lot of these i'm probably going to do some changes at the end so just go ahead and stick around until the end so you can see everything that i do here uh moving on danny dimes daniel jones um okay so he did become a top 12 quarterback last year and i'm still trying to figure out how because he didn't have really the best weapons no one can really name like every single weapon that he had at the time but he still found a way to actually become somewhat relevant. And once again, he was in the top 12. But he does have a little bit of legs, except that one run where he was wide open, went to the, was on the way to making a touchdown, and then he just tripped. But we're not going to talk about that. But we are going to talk about the fact that he can run. But as far as where I'm going to take him... 
it's a high C, I would probably okay. So maybe not high C. So we'll keep it as a regular C. Um, and these are the orders that I'm putting it in. So in this case, I would take Stafford over Lawrence, over Jones, and over Tannehill. So that's how I'm feeling right now. Derek Carr is going to be a person that's going to have the revitalization for going to a new city, going to a new team, and having the availability to go off. Um, he has the weapons in Mike, in Michael Thomas and Chris Olave and a returning Jimmy Graham, but it's not, but Jimmy Graham isn't really as important. But if I had to put in an option, I'm like, a, like this one is actually going to be a C again. So I would actually put him over Tannehill. So let me put that in and actually over Danny Dimes. I think he may be closer to relevant than I think, but I don't, but I, but for me personally, I'm not going to want him as a starting quarterback, but he is going to have his time to shine. Jared Goff. So Jared Goff, I'm going to put on the lower B because of the fact that he has the weapons. He has shown that he has the availability in his career before the Lions. He showed that he had the availability to do multiple 300 yard games in a season, uh, multiple touchdowns. Uh, games in a season so I was really impressed with what he ended up doing last year with the Lions Um, I do have a feeling that Derek Goff can have the availability to lead his team to at least be second in that division but pretty much I I think it'll be close enough where the Lions do have the availability to possibly even top the Vikings but I'm still picking the Vikings personally but Derek Goff I think he could do decent numbers but I am going to put him on a B uh, B tier excuse me the problem I have with Jordan Love is we all don't know what he can actually do as of this very moment. This is a very young team in Green Bay um, with the wide receivers, with no wide receiver being more than a second year, but he still has Aaron Jones. He still has A.J. Dillon, so, well, pick and pop throws is still going to be possible. Uh, Christian Watson is going to be pretty solid this year, but I need to know if this team can actually score. So that being said, I can't trust him right now, but I'm going to put him on the D tier. But I do feel that he can be up to a high C if he plays well. The Mac, Mac Jones. He's just not a runner, and I'm kind of scared for the Patriots this year as far as how well are they going to score. Sorry that I know there's that a lot of Patriots fans out there, but Mike, or excuse me, Mac Jones is more of a time manager. So he's kind of like Jimmy G, in which we'll talk about a little bit later. But I do feel that in this case, Mac, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take you down to, gotta take you down to a, to a D tier. I'm sorry, Desmond Ritter and the Atlanta Falcons. I think is going to be a fun team to watch just only for fantasy. I do like the availability or the possibilities of what that team can actually do. But I'm not going to put him at an F because I don't think he's completely useless. Um, So I am going to put him at a D, but probably ahead of Mac Jones um, because there is at least the rushing upside for him but not above Jordan Love just yet. There's a lot of hype with Anthony Richardson. If you don't believe me, ask Manny. Manny feels that the Colts can actually win the division in its entirety. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but I'm just saying, prove it to me, show me. Um, His weapons are okay. Um, The defense last year was actually one of the worst in the NFL as far as points allowed per game. So if that continues on, then Richardson is definitely going to have some availability to show out. I'm going to trust Manny in this case. So I'm going to put him in a C tier, but I'm going to put him in right between Carr and Trevor Lawrence. So that's a little bit more. That's a lot of faith for someone that I believe that might not be able to win their division. 
CJ Stroud. Mike is the fan of this quarterback. He's uh I'm trying to honestly think what what to what to expect out of him over uh, for his team. I I don't want to I mean, what can the Texans do? Like seriously, what can the Texans legitimately do which would keep me from saying that all right, this is the team. This is someone that I can rely on for fantasy purposes. Like right now, and I hate and I hate to say this, the, he's going to have growing pains, but I don't think this year is the year for it. So I'm going to put him for a D right now um, between Mac Jones and uh, Desmond Ritter. But again, just like Jordan Love, just like a lot of these other quarterbacks, there's potential. Josh Allen, who's over here. Um, Josh Allen, he did have a he did have an elbow injury, I believe, last during last year. Um, that's kind of slowed him down. However, the guy can ball, so I may change this in a little bit. But for right now, I'm putting him in the A tier. I may change him to to S tier, but for right now, I'm going to put him in A. Um, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts. God tier. I know that Mike and Manny being Cowboys fans, they're not going to be one to agree with me, but they can admit that that this guy can actually play. He puts up the stats that he needs to put, but he is going to have a harder schedule this year. So that being said, like I still like him as an S tier. Um, I still believe that he does have the availability to ball out again this year. Um, Lamar Jackson. I kind of want to put him on I, I want to put him on S tier. But I'm trying to figure out how much can I trust the wide receivers uh, this year. I mean, yes, they got Odell Beckham. Yes, they still have uh, Mark Andrews. But that rushing that he has is impeccable. But I'm just trying to see whether or not if it's something that he wants to focus on this year so Lamar 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 I'm gonna put him a high A I, w- I would put him above I would put him above uh, I'll put him above Josh Allen there is some iffiness about that I know that I might get blasted on the comments but I'm gonna say I'm gonna yeah I'm, I'm, I'm good with that I'm good with that actually uh, moving on Patrick Mahomes I don't think there's any way around it. I still don't understand how he does it with um, the lack. I'm not going to say the lack of receivers, but with the um, with the lack of star power in the receivers. I do feel that Kelsey is the only really person that you can actually fully 100% trust. Everyone else, Kadarius Tony recently got an injury, um, which could be a step up for Sky Moore. But outside of that, there I don't know how he does it, but I know that the man does it. He takes care of the ball. He handles that offense so well. I got to put him at S tier, no question. Justin Fields. I would put Justin Fields over Jared Goff. I would put him kind of close with Russell Wilson, but I think I am going to put him over Russell Wilson. Um, Justin Fields does have the running, the rushing capability and even put in the bold claim that he's going to do 4,000 yards um, passing this year, which no Chicago Bear has ever done ever. Can he be the first? Maybe. But he's good at running and sometimes running and the uh, rushing touchdowns is all you need from him. So I'm good with him at the B tier. Joe Burrow. I'm going to put him at A, but I can't go higher than Josh Allen with him. Um, Burrow just has a squad. He has possibly the best duo for wide receivers in the NFL right now. And that alone, plus everything that they did uh, for the Super Bowl and everything they did for the for this past year after the Super Bowl, I was actually really impressed, and I hope that in this case, with me putting him in the A tier, that he just does as much, but as well 
but that calf injury, I hope he does get better soon so that he can start the season so that he can stay at that A tier in general. Um, I talked about on our uh, fantasy show that there was a couple of teams that I'm looking forward to as far as drafting for the values that they have. The Cleveland Browns is the, one of those teams. Um, it's For me, it's Cleveland. It's the, San Diego, excuse me, the LA Chargers. And there's a third team. I'll talk about that as far as who it will be in just a little bit. But Deshaun Watson, I was really hoping that um, if he didn't get the suspension that he was going to ball out. He, but he did get the suspension, a very long suspension. But with him actually having a full year now with such a good core offensively, I am going to put him at the A. Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to put him at a high B, which will give him room to actually go to an A tier. So I do like Deshaun Watson this year in general. His value as far as um, when he's getting drafted is perfect. That's the same thing with his uh, with his teammates like Amari Cooper, um, like Nick Chubb and all of them. So... I do feel that there is some room for improvement for him. So that I'm going to put him at a high B and I can see him as a low A as a, as a ceiling. Sam Howell, F. <laughs> I'm sorry, but can you legitimately tell me a person that is going to be all right with putting Powell as a starter for fantasy, even in a two team league, even in best ball? Where you, where you usually draft about 20 people. I can't see it. I can't see that. But Terry McLaurin, McLaurin's going to ball. Scary Terry's going to ball. And I know in a sense that he would need Hal for that to happen, but I don't think Hal could do it. So that being said, I am going to put him down to the F tier. Prove me wrong, commanders. Please prove me wrong. Um, Kyler Murray thing going on with him um i gotta put him in a d tier for right now just based on his current situation even worse which is kind of which kind of sucks but it's even worse than mac jones like i can't put i can't trust him right now based on his situation um the cardinals are one of the worst teams in the league that's both offensively and defensively um there's really no one that i could trust in arizona at all Kenny Pickett has the availability. I've, I've seen a couple of concert creators that believe that that Pickett can go, um, could be the one that turns it around and does really big for his second year. Now, while I believe that there is going to be room for improvement for everything that he does, I don't think that it's going to be in the way that we all want it to be. So, again, prove me wrong, Kenny Pickett. I'm going to put you for right now put you in a high D so above Ritter actually I'll put you in the cream of the crop I'll put you uh let's switch you there all right so I'll put you above Jordan Love so you're so you're the highest there you have the capability of getting to a C get me there show me so Jimmy G with the Raiders he does have a good quarter he does have a good wide receiver excuse me in Devontae Adams Hunter Renfro but again he's not he's not really a guy that does 300 yards a game on average he's more of a person he's more of a time he's more of a time manager he's always been like that uh, when he was with the Niners he was like that when he was with the Patriots he was like that um, but that being said like can I trust him Sorry, I know there's a, I know there's a couple of Raiders fans that we know, so I'll put them right in the middle. Um, I, yeah, as weird as this sounds, I would put Jordan Love, Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter over Jimmy G. I'm sorry, I need to see that they can actually keep on scoring. Baker Mayfield, which is, <laughs> which is someone that I that I talked about on our um, on one of our episodes that I would take over Jimmy G actually. From our AFC West episode, um, Baker Mayfield, if he's the guy even to be the starter, we don't know if he's going to be the starter yet. 
So that being said, I did say I will put him over Jimmy G. That's exactly what I'm doing. But he's still a D. So Bryce Young, you know, we've been talking about, we've been talking a lot about um, CJ Stroud and Anthony Richardson. We've been talking about those two a lot. Um, but it kind of seems like that Bryce Young is the one that's like the odd person out. So that being said, sadly, unfortunately, he doesn't have the receivers that I would like be able to trust. Like, he, who, who do they pick up? Adam Thielen? They picked up Adam Thielen over the offseason, and he was never really a person that I trusted in the first place. Like, I thought he was terrible last year in uh, Minnesota. So... Hate to see it, but like putting me in the D tier between Mac Jones and CJ Stroud. That's really all I could do. Aaron Rodgers. Definitely not F. Definitely not D. Definitely not C. I guess the question becomes from here do, do you believe that he's going to have enough volume in the past game to be able to be relevant? in fantasy football. I kind of don't. That's my opinion. He's going to be fine. Like a person that a person that run, that throws like 3 like 3500 yards and 30 touchdowns may not be as relevant as also depending on what your settings are. He may not be as relevant as a person that's like similar to um Josh Allen, let's say that could do the that could do those same things plus plus rush for five six hundred yards. So that's kind of that's kind of why Josh Allen's a little bit more relevant in this case. But in here in this situation, higher than Jared Goff, and that's where I'm going to keep him right there. So to me, he's a B quarterback. Again, this is only fantasy purposes. So if you guys blast me go ahead and blast me on the comments as far as what you guys think if you think that he's gonna that Aaron Rodgers is gonna be the guy let me know I'll, I'll be more than happy to at least take a look uh Dak Prescott okay I'm gonna be careful with this one because I know that Mike and Manny's gonna say something about it so definitely not F definitely not D definitely not C so Dallas has always been a high-powered offense I, I've always been a fan of the of the Dallas offense um so I'm gonna take him. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher than Aaron Rodgers, higher than Wilson, higher than Fields, higher than Tua, and that's where I'm gonna go. Um, there is value in drafting him as well. Like Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott are nearly the same person as far as uh, draft capital where it would be good to get them to where they currently are right now. Um, he definitely has the opportunity to get up to an A, but I know that, like I said, I know that I'm going to get blasted on, but I'm sorry, guys. But as of right now, I can see him just where he is, and I think that's actually perfectly fine um, comparing to where all the other quarterbacks are. Like That's still like a number six or seven um, for right now, anyway, in quarterbacks. In the league, so he is still draftable, of course. Um, Geno Smith. Geno Smith showed me a lot last year, and I feel that Geno is going to be underlooked. I don't think that people are going to look his way as far as starting, as far as becoming a quarterback, but I think Seattle is going to do something a little bit different this year, and it's even to the point where I'll boldly say that they have the opportunity to take the NFC West uh, from the Niners. We'll talk about that on our uh, future episode. So right now, I'm going to put... I can't do it over Tua. I'll I'll go over Justin Fields. And I know that probably a lot of people are going to say right now, you're going to put Geno Smith over Aaron Rodgers and Jared Goff. I kind of am. I think I am. Like I said, I might change this a little bit. So let's keep let's keep it moving. We got two. We got three more left. 
So, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. He's Mr. Average. Like he is Mr. Floor. Like he's he's never gonna he's never gonna steer you wrong. I don't feel so. Like I kind of feel that Stafford Stafford and Cousins are like the same quarterback, nearly. But I am gonna at least put them better than Goff, but not better than Aaron Rodgers. So B tier for him. Those are my general thoughts about him. I. I do like the weapons that he has for him. Let's see how it all goes. Brock Purdy. I might be, or I might surprise some people with uh, this, with me being a 49ers fan, but I'm going to put him, I'm going to put him in the C tier because everything about that team is, even though that's my team, that's my, that's my squad. The Niners are my squad, but there's still a lot of questions that I even I can't answer right now as far as how this offense is going to uh, be used. Are they still going to continue with the run? How effective is George Kittle going to be for the future? Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk. I would love to see Brandon, Brandon Ayuk actually have a season this year. So I'm going to put him above Richardson. Above Lawrence. And that's where I'm going to stop. So for fantasy purposes, yes, he's a C tier to me. Justin Herbert can have one hell of a fantasy football season this year. So that being said, I'm actually going to put him in the low A's. So based on what you see here, like if you get anyone from the draft, if you're drafting and you're getting one from the S, the A, and the B tier, you're going to be okay. You're going to be fine. These are the quarterbacks that I would actually rely on on a week-to-week basis that can be able to likely actually even win your league. Now, as far as the stats that you need, like I feel the A, the S, A, and B tier. Those are the ones that's going to consistently get you there. Like I'll probably actually put. Okay, let me put Justin Fields a little bit lower. Um, I'll put I'll put uh, Russ Wilson over him. Um, but that's really that's really all I got here. This is who I feel can actually win you a league. Like Matthew Stafford, I don't think can do it. Brock Purdy, uh, Trevor Lawrence, I feel does have an availability to do it. Um, but pretty much everyone from Trevor Lawrence down, I might not, I might not personally draft. So that's a lot of people that I would be willing to draft. So quarterbacks, there's not really any issues or any problems this year. I feel. All right, fine. All right, fine. I'll put Josh Allen in the low S tier. So there you have it. Tell me what your thoughts are. That's it. That's everything for today. If you like everything that you saw here, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to actually have a different opinion, which is always welcome, go ahead and hit the comment section. And then from there, I'll see you on the next show. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Have a good afternoon whenever you guys are listening and whenever you guys are watching.